We have to talk about this article, courtesy of Allure, that features the one and only Willow Smith. Big up Willow Smith. Willow Smith has to be up there with maybe the Beckham's kids, with the exception of, I think, is it Romeo? Or, no, reception of Brooklyn. I think the Beckham's kids and Will and Will Smith's kids are some of the best behaved and the most admirable celebrity children out there, right? They are amazing. I, I think you have to give a lot of credit to their parents, how they brought them up. They don't seem like dickheads. They've seemed very well, you know, they seem to have a good head on their shoulders. Even Jaden, with sometimes his antics, they all seem to be decent people. Some people, like, you know, Guys that you you would end up bumping into and you wouldn't be, oh, this person's a prick, this person's a cunt. They seem fucking lovely, especially Willow. And Willow had some really interesting things to say. Uh, this is, I think, as promo for a new album. She's got this whole cover story here in Allure where she looks amazing, obviously. Big up Willow. Um, always amazingly photogenic in terms of um, editorials and what she looks like. She's a great mix between her parents and shit. And just in general, as an artist, I've always been a big fan of her anyway. Very, very underrated. But she had a very astute and almost impressive um, explanation for how she feels being a quote-unquote nepo baby. And I feel like she provided one of the best explanations for it that I've, I've heard from anybody. I swear to God. She was legitimately um, spoke about it in such a great way that I feel like this is what that needs to be fucking highlighted. So it's in this section down here where she speaks about it. So let me uh, get it up on here. So, um, so in this section, it says the following. That voice also drives her work ethic. Given her lineage, Willow is what some would call a Nepo baby. Yes, there are doors that have opened because she is a Smith as a last name. However, after some deliberation, we both agree that she doesn't quite fit the bill. First off, because of her determination and creative output are not exactly consistent with Nepo baby with Nepo babyhood. Say what you like, but Willow doesn't coast. Cool. We continue. Let's see, look at the makeup. Look at the makeup on her lips. I love the two-tone shade here. You've got a bit of, what's that, like burgundy. You've got this lighter shade here with the glitter. They really did a number on her there as well. Nice. And I, I don't know if those are fake freckles, but the fake freckles as well work really well there. It says, I truly believe that my, in my, that my spirit is a strong spirit and that even if my parents weren't who they were, I would still be a weirdo and a crazy thinker, she says. I definitely think that a little bit of insecurity has driven me harder because people do think that the only reason I'm successful is because of my parents. That has driven me to work really hard to try to prove them wrong. But nowadays, I don't need to prove shit to nobody. Isn't that a refreshing thing to hear? Because you hear a lot of Nepo babies, especially the white ones, denying their Nepo babies in the football, which is like, no one's saying, I don't think anybody, even the most uncharitable um, cunt of a person out there, is saying that being a Nepo baby automatically means you're going to be successful. There are pl plenty, plenty of children of famous people who've done absolutely nothing in life right that's not a crime but we've not really achieved anything that their parents have that's the case we know that to be true what the nepo baby thing is saying to me personally is i think it's more so a way to explain why some people find it harder to make it in some areas than others because especially in the creative field like let's just say in my field where it comes to design where it comes to fashion art all that sort of shit it's advantageous to be a nepo baby because but usually that would mean that your parents have a job that allows you to maybe take more chances. Maybe you can intern at a gallery when you're 25 and not have to worry about your bills. That is a, that is a privilege and advantage that you get because you're an Epo baby. And also maybe the gallery that you work in, because of the connections with your parents who also work in the art, 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 in the art industry, that could also allow you to get into galleries where maybe I couldn't get into as even a, an intern. So that's all people are saying. They don't, they're not saying that once you get in there, you're guaranteed to have a career being a fucking art buyer or having your own gallery. You still have to work and put the work in and show that you're able to do the job. Cool. But that first advantage of being born of a certain lineage and having somebody say like your parents, oh, I can put in a call for you or I can connect you with this person. Those are not easy things to come by. Like I, I think some of you, especially if you've been in the, in the creative field, you know, it's not easy to get a hold of emails of people that you want to get in touch with. Someone that you want to give you a chance or you want to hire you or you want to pitch something to. It's not that easy to get emails. But if you're a Nepo baby, you have emails, you have direct contacts. Maybe your parents go to the same fucking private members club. Maybe they're part of the same golf club. Maybe they go to the same whatever meeting, whatever it may be. Those things are what gives you the advantage. But obviously, once you get there, the hard work is still necessary. So it's refreshing to hear Willow say it in that way. Anyway, it continues. The second reason she doesn't fit the Nepo baby mold is more fundamental because she's a black woman in America. 
And no matter if your parents are on the billboards or if you've been the face of Chanel or Mugler campaign, which Willow has most recently signing a beauty contract with Dior, you can still walk into places and get put in your place. Very true. And that also lends itself to what Law Roach was talking about recently. Law Roach, the stylist supreme, who's the main stylist for, and the only stylist for Zendaya, I think basically his only main client, was saying in interviews recently that essentially being a black stylist, you're almost put into a box, especially if you only deal with black clients. In order to kind of, you know, make yourself appear more sophisticated and to show that you have, be you know, a better taste level, whatever it may be, you have to start working with white clients, which is obviously stupid. But he was making that point and saying that he actually took a risk by dedicating and committing to Zendaya because he could probably be far, he could probably be way more high, highly regarded if he did have a popping, you know, white person to kind of get behind. Imagine if Law Roach was fucking styling Olivia Rodrigo, for instance. He'd be fucking out of here. But he's had a slow build in terms of his career because you're kind of pigeonholed if you are black because of the, the scene and how it is. It's fucking dumb, but it kind of is what it is, which I kind of understand. But I still think you can be a nepper baby if you're black. I don't think it's, of, it's overall, but I understand where she's going there. Another one. There have, been ex there have been some experiences where I went into a place that I've worked in the past and my picture could have been up on the wall and they treat me like, this is a little bit out of your price range. Which is something that every black person's experienced, right? You go into a designer store, especially a luxury brand, you want to go cop something and they treat you like, like a hoodlum, basically. They treat you like a like a like like a street rat, whatever. They don't give you any kind of respect and they kind of view you first based on the color of your skin and less about, you know, the strength of your character and what you're trying to buy. Not even strength of your character, but who you are as a person, all that good stuff, right? Or just the fact that you want to buy stuff and be a good customer. And usually as well, the really sad and annoying part about shopping in luxury stores is that sometimes you receive the worst treatment from black employees. Sometimes the black employees, such as the security guards or the sales assistants or the managers, are the ones that treat you the worst when you go into these luxury stores. So they're the ones that are jobs worth, right? They're working for Dior. They actually think as if they're fucking a part of the Christian Dior team when you're just working fucking retail. They take ownership of the brand and the store like it's their own place or you walk into their own living room and then they treat you, a fellow black person, like fucking garbage when really it's like, hey, if you're out of this uniform and you've walked into this place like me, you'd also be treated like shit. Why don't you want to, you know, rewrite that stuff and treat me good? But whatever, it doesn't happen. Cool, let's continue. She says, um... Or you don't really belong here, she says. Being black in America, even with privilege, which I'm never going to deny that I have, you're still black. And I love being black. People would look at me and say, okay, well, her parents are this and that, but she still is like me. She's still a brown skin, and we all know that that doesn't exempt you from anything. That's the place of connection. And that is really, really true, unfortunately. And I think you see a lot... I think you see it probably a lot more in the UK. I think in America... I think I mentioned it before in, in my Patreon, actually, about my reaction to the fucking um, Tom Brady roast. So check that out if you haven't already. It's available now on my Patreon, Tom Brady roast. I did a whole reaction of it. It's available there at patreon.com, which is Agostino. Subscribe for only one pound um, per month. But I did mention that one of the great things I think about America is that when you, when you ascertain wealth, you can kind of climb up the, the climb of class ladder. Whereas in the UK, you can't really. In the UK, it's mostly about, you know, the, the stock your blood, your family background, the name, that's more important. It doesn't really matter if you're a, like, Alan Sugar's always going to have a ceiling. It doesn't matter how much wealth he attains. It doesn't matter if he's got a knighthood. You're still going to be looked at as like a regular East End council kind of boy, it, no matter how much money you have. Whereas I feel like in America, if you go from being like, if you kind of become a self-made person and you're a rags and riches person, you could essentially be in the same room as a president. Whereas in the, in the UK, you probably couldn't be in the same room as a prime minister if you're not from a certain background, didn't go to a certain school, blah, 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 blah. But I also feel like here in the UK, it's very clear when you're a minority. They make it very clear to you that no matter how much money you make, you're also a minority. You're also Asian. You're also black. You're also this. You're also that. And it doesn't change anything, which is, I think, a good thing because it lets you know what you're playing. You don't get, I think, one of the bad things about American Dream is that you get sold a false dream that doesn't really exist. And once you get there, you realize, oh, it's all a charade. At least in the UK, even though it's bad vibes, <laughs> you get told very early on, this is your lane, stick it to it. If you don't stick to it, we're going to slap you on the ass. We're going we're gonna to slap you on the wrist and tell you to get back in line. So at least you know where you stand. So you can kind of, you know, get it how you live, 
go where you're loved and adored and not seeking you know uh, acceptance or acknowledgement for people that are never going to accept you that's probably one of the only good things about living in the uk without kind of a lucky um it continues uh da -da -da -da, my progression no cool that's basically it so essentially she kind of you know explained how being a nepo baby is probably more advantageous if you're white which obviously makes sense but it's also a mindset a little bit there's a mindset about it but i've also kind of thought about it like i have a bit of sympathy for them because it must be difficult especially because basically being a nepo baby means that your parents were excellent in their field even to have that nepo baby tag it means your parents were excellent they were like high level achievers they really did the business in whatever field they're in so how could you ever emulate that like you're the you're you're the children of fucking Jada, you know, Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith. How could you ever top that kind of success or whatever it may be? The only way you can do it is by doing maybe what Willow and Jaden are doing. Kind of carving your own path, carving your own lane and not trying to emulate what your parents did. That's probably the only way you could really do it and even make any change. But I also understand and accept, you know, the pushback from some Nepo babies and they say, why wouldn't I go into the same area my parents have gone into if they've already laid the groundwork for me to already go into it? right it's you're almost disrespecting your parents hard work if you don't follow in their footsteps a little bit so i kind of understand that side of things as well so everything has its challenges there is no easy path to anything i'm sure that you know she's had to probably work doubly hard to prove the doubters wrong and to prove that she's valid and worthy of fucking praise and attention and whatever else it may be in the industry but i thought her explanation for nepo baby or nepotism in general was very astute and very well reasoned and again just wise behind her age you know so someone so young to sound so reasonable and sound so rational and sound so level-headed is very rare especially being the you know a, a fucking super celebrity especially with her parents especially herself as well being a notoriety that she is and i love the direction she's going in music wise i love that it's all this kind of quote-unquote weirdo alternative very out there type of music it doesn't really conform to genres. It's almost genreless. I love that side of things. And I just love that in general, she kind of has her own voice and kind of moves to the beat of her own drum. So big up Willow Smith. Big up Willow Smith. A new album is out now as well at the moment. What's a new album called? I forgot. There's actually a new album. I need, need to actually do a review of that as well, by the way. But she has got a new album out at the moment, which is called... Uh, what's it called? It's called Empath Empathogen. Empathogen. Empathogen as well. Check it out. Really nice cover as well. Her smiling in the front with an afro. So big up Empathogen. Her new album out at the moment. I think it's only like 10 tracks long as well. So a nice short one. I think it's 12 tracks. Comes in about 32 minutes. Really kind of concise album by the looks of it. I haven't heard it at the time. But I will check it out soon. I probably will check it out soon. So I recommend you do so too. I recommend you do so too.